Hi, I'm Captain Mike, and I have a question for you. What do you do with all of the empty wine bottles that you have collected? Well, I've got plenty of ideas to use these empty wine bottles and beer bottles. So give me a minute to clear these away, and I will show you what we're going to do with them. Before we get started here, uh, let me give you the regular uh, safety warning, and that is if you're going to be dealing with glass, anytime you're dealing with glass, wear your safety glasses. And with bottles in particular, because they're so unpredictable in how they, unpredictable in how they break, uh, gloves are recommended. I find them hard to work with, but they are highly recommended. And the last and most important warning statement is, if you're going to drink, do it responsibly, okay? Uh, this video uh, features alcoholic beverage containers. Uh, we'll start with the most common beer bottles. And they come in clear, brown, blue, and green, and some other colors. You might can get an amber and only know. These are your average beer bottles. If you like the blue ones, you're going to have to find a friend who drinks uh, Bud Light, Platinum, green, brown, and white are rather common. And it's the same with wine bottles. Wine bottles come basically in a couple of shades of green, a couple of shades of brown and amber clear and if you can find someone who drinks a Riesling a Riesling bottle wine bottles are usually blue so that's the colors now wine bottles all beer bottles are shaped pretty much like this there's not much else you could say about them wine bottles however come in different thicknesses the glass is different the knobs for the neck opening up here is different some are screw on like this some are, have corks in them, and the bottoms are different. Uh, wine that is rather inexpensive and doesn't have a lot of carbonation has flat bottoms, like this. The bottom is very flat. As you move up in the carbonation, uh, in particular uh, champagne bottles and some of the more expensive wines, the, the, the ends are going to be recessed and there's come, they come in different, different types and also different sizes, okay? All right, that's enough about wine bottles. Let's get on to what you can do with them. Now to the fun part. Everybody knows that you can make these uh, with your bottles. You slump them, different kind of molds. You can do them completely flat like this. You can do them with the neck turned down. You can do them with the designs in the bottom. Uh, I've done them with all kinds of different molds. This is one of the Riesling bottles, and these are popular. Uh, people like these. They're easy to do. You have to have a kiln, a regular size kiln, to do these. That's the first thing. Everybody does these. Lots of videos on YouTube telling you how to do this. I won't bother you with the schedules because you can find that out. The next thing that you can do, especially with uh, beer bottles, uh, these are uh, sun catchers. And um, I call them redneck sun catchers. <laughs> and I think that it's appropriate. You, I just cut the bottom off the bottle, used it for something else. So here's the bottom off of one of them, the blue ones. and. Uh, I just cut the bottom off. I find that it flattens out for these a lot better. You don't have this, this overlap right here. Uh, and in these particular ones, I put pieces of uh, uh, heat resistant wire in them and it melted down on them and holds it. Uh, it's easier really just to drill a hole in them with a diamond blade, uh, excuse me, diamond drill. But that is a good use for them. They, they, they need, uh, they, I just hang them on every tree uh, on my path from the house to up here to my shop and they just spin in the sun. Now, the next thing that everybody does is cuts off their wine bottles 
and these are going to make great candles. Just happen to have one. This one is a uh, apple cinnamon. Very nice. That's all you have to do. I just uh, uh, use some heat glue, put my metal tab to the bottom of that, pull the wick up, pour this. In this case, it's soy, and it makes a great container candle. You can't go wrong. And then you can uh, uh, make more candles. Let me show you. The first candle I'm going to show you is a hurricane candle of type. This is just a ceramic platform that I made. A little container candle that I made. Now, of course, I bought the little red thing, but that was a long time ago. Cut, cut the bottom off of your wine bottle. Color of your choice. Boom. You have one, and it'll draw. You have a candle. It'll soot up in there some, but you can clean it out. And then a variation on that is this one. And th the bottom comes from the same place as the first one. I made it, it's ceramic. However, this little votive container is made out of the bottom of a green beer bottle. And I just stuck it over one of these stainless steel cups I have. I treated it first. This one has not been treated, but I put, you can put ZYP, you can put a glass separator or whatever you want on it. Put your, your piece of uh, glass over it and put it in the kiln and fire it. It'll drape down into some nice shapes, just like these. Makes nice little shapes. Now, that can be done in a microwave. It's small enough to go in your microwave kiln. This one, I cut the top off the, off of it so that it was this way. Looked, looked like a little different. It's just a different idea. And voila, you have it. Uh, this is a, a little uh, gel wax, but anything will work. And that's one candle. And the last is this candle right here. All of them on the same basic theme of using a platform. However you make it, believe it or not, you can make one out of wood. These would not get hot enough to burn it. You could cut them out of wood, sand them up, put some finish on them, put a, a votive of your choice in there, even a tea light. This particular piece right here is a ceramic piece I made in one of my little homemade molds. Again, I poured some soy wax in there. This time I cut the bottle just like a cylinder. Works great. Looks good. It's, uh, it's just a nice thing to do with your beer bottles. One other thing that you can do with your beer bottles, excuse me, wine bottles. So you can do this with beer bottles too. And this is make yourself some glass. Some glass pieces. Let's say you just want some little pieces of glass to make things out of. You are limited by the size of your wine bottle. You know, this is, this is a half a wine bottle. I take it, I put it in my kiln on a piece of shelf paper, uh, like this, and voila, they all flatten out. You're limited by only by the color. I didn't do a clear one because you can use float glass for clear. There's no use to, to waste all of your time and energy on a wine bottle, on a clear wine bottle. You can if you want to, but there you go. That is really hand, handy. You can take these and then after the glass is made, you can slump it over one of those really swell little six by six uh, uh, molds. They come all, you can get all kinds of them online and make nice little uh, display pieces. Uh, whatever you wish to do with this. Just remember, you've got to use compatible glass. So when you go to mixing it, wine bottles may mix, they may not mix. Float glass may mix with them, it may not. And they crack a lot. Now these cracks are healed. Okay, well that one not, that's a brand spanking new crack right there. But uh, it's, it came from one that it healed. These wine bottles crack easy. They don't cut really, really swell like you think they would. Uh, now, this is something that kind of I thought was cute. And they're not finished, they're not polished up around the edges. But what about little mushrooms? 
I like mushrooms. I make a lot of ceramic mushrooms. You can make mushrooms. I use the little parts off the, the neck of the bottle. I cut it. I cut that. And you can grind it if you want to on your grinder. And uh, it works out really nice. There's part of a neck, you see. Another little top, kind of looks like a sombrero. But uh, you can cut it back to where the, the little round, this little part right here is not on it. It's not a problem. Take your nippers and just nip it all the way around. You need little glass nippers. I hope you've got glass nippers. If you don't, get online and buy yourself a set of glass nippers. You're going to deal with glass, you need them. Uh, but, you know, those work out really good. Uh, they, I make a lot of them. This is just a bigger one, okay? No, nothing important about it. It's just a little taller. How tall do you want your mushroom to be? Uh, and I explained about these. These are just little little glass pieces that uh, I made by putting them over either the um, this or one of the things right here. I can use you can use it for a mold. They're ceramic. They're those little cups that I make out of a plaster mold. And you can just take a a, a piece and put it like that. And it will make a, a nice round one. And if you don't slump it too much, it'll retain some of the patterns on the bottom of the bottle. This one did. Uh, and, you know, it's not uncommon for it to, to, to retain them. That one did also. It retained the pattern around it, whether you see it or not. Uh, and then you end up with all kinds of little pieces. You end up with pieces like this. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these yet. But... Uh, you end up with all kinds. You end up with a few pieces like this. There's just you can make a wine glass out of it. If you don't cut the piece off right here, it'll be nice and flat. You can uh, you can put it on a or on a eh, something like that. Okay. And you make yourself a wine glass. I'm just going crazy here, folks. Uh, you know you can do use your imagination. Use your imagination. I share with you what I think of at the spur, on the spur of the moment, but hey, if you're watching this channel, if you're interested in glass and arts and crafts, you've already got an inquisitive mind. You just want somebody to spark it, and I hope that's what I'm doing. Now, one of the last things that I'm going to show you before I tell you some technical stuff is what you can do with the pieces like this that you cut off, okay? And I cut that off of every one of them that I'm going to cut down. You can make nice pendants. See, there's a pendant. There's one that I did out of a blue bottle top. That one's, you know, it was pretty thick and it, it went on down and it doesn't have a big hole. You have to kind of catch them. This, this one here is where I came further up the neck on, on some of the bottles. Uh, some of the bottles are shaped a little different. This, this, this bottle right here, you see the, the neck is a lot uh, uh, more shapely, if you will. So as you make cuts through it, the opening changes and you can come up with different size holes to do different things with. Um, but that's, that's the pendants. That's what you can do with this part right here. And, of course, the bottoms lend themselves just to sun catchers if you want or you have this nice big piece that you can slump over something uh, and make a cup or whatever uh, these I just cut the bottoms out of them and I, I let them fire polish a little bit I went to no particular uh, it, uh, trouble to, to grind them smooth just doing this for this video uh, and they have all kinds of applications now what I do on the bottle, let me explain. And we'll use this bottle we just used. It's a little on the nasty side. I haven't washed it. It has several cuts that you can make on this bottle. This one in particular, ooh, it's a nasty bottom. It's got the, the inset, so it's going to give you a top like that, or a bottom like that, whichever. I'll make my cut back about a half an inch, uh, three quarters, I mean, three eighths, whatever you want to do. I use an inexpensive Harbor Freight uh, tile saw, one of the little small ones. I also have a big tile saw, and it works if you have one of those. But you can, for 60 bucks, you can buy one that comes with the blade from Harbor Freight. It does the job. It has a diamond blade, 
I take it and I just kind of turn it very gently against the blade and let it cut its way through slowly. I cut this piece off first, then I usually uh, go over to my 10 inch saw because the, the Harbor Freight saw is just a little small, but you can do it. And I cut this piece off here. Then you can start sandwiching this as you wish and you'll end up with pieces of, you know, of, of glass from cylinder shaped to kind of bell shaped and as I mentioned this way and from all of those pieces you can make all of this stuff that I mentioned you just have to decide in your mind what you want now once you get the cylinder cut like this to make these pieces right here I take it and put it on the saw and run this right down the middle and I cut it right down the middle I flip it over 180 degrees and I cut it down through here you'll have two sides and you know they'll look something like this now be aware that this glass even in the same bottle the thickness varies these bottles this glass was not intended to do any of this so the manufacturers didn't care it is very prone to cracking and busting that's why I mentioned the gloves and definitely the eye protection but the bottles are free if you get them at your uh, 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 recycling center, which I do. They're free. Uh, or if you have friends that just consume large quantities of adult beverage, get them to save your bo the bottles for you. Uh, but that's what I do. I just section this bottle up depending on what I'm going to do. Bottom, main cylinder, and I start on the shoulders all the way down. And then I can get all the things that I showed you. Uh, you can let the tops, you can keep cooking them in your microwave until they are completely pendants. However you want to do them, they just can do them that way. You can leave the hole in them. Uh, any of the small stuff that will go in your regular microwave kiln, and you know what I'm talking about, folks. It's one of these, this size right here. You see, they'll, go, they'll all go in. Now you wouldn't put this in there. You could, you could, if it'll close, it won't. But you know, you want to put something in it that'll go on down. So you could do, well, I don't know if you do that or not. Yeah, no, no. But you get the point, you get the point. You, could, you can do whatever you want to do in your microwave kiln. Uh, and like I said earlier, use your protection. Uh, this stuff is brittle, it breaks, it cracks easily. Uh, Eye protection is mandatory. Gloves are recommended. Uh, you can buy ceramic stuff to do your bottles with and molds. It's up to you. Uh, any number of things that you can you can purchase online to help you along. Uh, and that is it. That's all I can think of for this video. Uh, I appreciate you all watching. Like I said. If you're going to empty these bottles out yourself, drink responsibly. Don't drive and drink. And uh, enjoy the craft. If you have some extra ideas, let me know. Uh, I'd like to add them to the list of things you can do with wine and beer bottles. So pretty much that's it. I'm Captain Mike, and I'm out of here.